Hey everyone, this is Davy Ann Rouse coming to you from the International Working Women's Day March in my hometown of Burien, hey, shout out to Burien. Um, also shout out to GZ Radio for allowing me to cover today's event, um, which along with being literally close to home, um, is also culturally close to home and my heart for me. So really excited to interview and experience this global movement alongside my fellow Filipinas. Say your name for the people. EJ. EJ from? Gabriella, Seattle. Dope, okay. Um, so EJ, I'm just like here to ask you like a few questions about like your involvement um, with Gabriella, Seattle um, and just like why you are here today. So starting off with the basic, what was the inspiration for today's event? Um, well, International Working Women's Day is in honor of um, the women who are um, basically holding up um, our economy, uh, our society, um, and the care of our future. Um, we are um, a Filipino uh, women's organization that is originally from um, the Philippines. So um, as you may know, um, the Philippines' number one um, export is um, people. Um, and about over 50% of those people who leave the Philippines are women. And so we're really coming at this, uh, we really want to celebrate the, um, the, we really want to celebrate the trials and tribulations, uh, the struggles of Filipino women, um, but also, um, you know, like believing in international solidarity. Um, we also want to bring up um, other struggles of um, other people through um, this event. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Yeah, definitely. Like, especially this being, you know, we're coming at you live from like the United States and like a lot of what we see in like the Philippines right now, as far as like imperialism came from here in our relationships. So I think like, yeah, that, that like international solidarity is like not just like something that we need, but something that's like called for, especially as we're like, we have this privilege now being, you know, here. And um, yeah, yeah. So completely, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, and then I just want to know like a little bit about your own history with uh, Gabriella Seattle. And because I know that you have an interesting one and have stories to tell. So um, tell them as you like deem like fit like right now. But yeah, what's your own yeah. personal history? Yeah. Um, thanks for asking. Um, I. I joined Gabriella Seattle probably um, seven years ago. Um, I was uh, fresh out of high, um, high school, not high school, um, college, um, and I was really looking to connect with my Filipino identity. Um, I joined Gabriella after um, my best friend um, was like, "You gotta check out these queer Filipinos. Um, they're hella dope." And um, I, that's that was really my entry, but. Um, Prior to that, I really had no political affiliations, nor to was I really politically um, involved. Like my um, background was mostly like environmentalism, um, which is very like white and white centered. Yes. And um, I really thought it was like unjust that um, a lot of our families were, um, you know, are forcibly migrated yeah. to the United States. and all over the world. And that's why Gabrielle exists because a lot of us are leaving the Philippines. Yeah. Because the things are like uncontrollable to us or like this like false narrative of like, things will be better once we get her, our families will get here. Yeah. Right, and that, yeah. and, and we learned that that's not actually guaranteed. Exactly. That like uh, once um, our family like leaves the Philippines, um, there's really not very many protections for them and they exactly. usually fall you know into predatory loans or like um situations where um they their rights are taken away like you know passports or um, wage theft um and that's really um that's really scary um and this is not only happening to filipinos yeah yeah but it's still like very important especially like for the culture you know for like our own personal experiences or family or friends experiences to advocate on behalf of and alongside of um Absolutely. so yeah that's thank you for sharing that again i can't like thank you enough um i guess now all i have to ask is like um 
what advice would you give someone who wants to start like transitioning into um you know talks about liberation in their own households where it might there might be like walls put up or i guess like intergenerational like stigma around like liberation um a lot of like our parents have been and um elders have been very much like influenced by the like american or like united states idealism that is like that is really just like imperialism or imperialistic mindset. So how how do we like approach that? How have you done that in like your own life? Um, how is Gabriella Seattle doing that actively, you know, outside of events like this today? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of us have like very um, different relationships to our parents, to our, our blood families. Um, me personally, I um, am kind of, um, I, I have like built my own family, um, like my chosen family, um, but it is really hard to reconcile the past with the present. Um, there is a lot of disagreements, you know, between our elders and like what what they um, experienced versus like our experience as Filipino Americans. Um, and I think it's really important to to consider the past and like. Um, create our narrative around like what happened to like together like what is there it's not that I don't know for me personally I think it's hard to bring along folks who are like really you know like they don't see uh the possibility of like a free Philippines but um I think it's important to to hear that and know that that comes from a, a different place and I think as as uh, people who are are pushing the movement forward, we cannot um, dwell too much on that, and we have to keep pushing along and and building with those building power with those who um, can also share in that vision, um, because it's not you. It's not one person's singular like duty to change someone's mind, mm -hmm. but I think you know by like being yourself and and um, being the change that you want to see, um, you know, that's what really matters is like you're centered on your empowerment and, um, and, and building with community who, who are going to fight alongside you because this, this fight is so long and it's so tiring and you really need um, to organize in order to create change. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like the idea of like preparing yourself for a fight that could continue for our entire lifetimes. Yeah. I think like community care and finding, like you said, like the community that cares for you and that you can care about as well. Yeah. Um, I I just want to give you the space too. Thank you again. I keep saying like thank you, thank you, thank you. But um, to plug anything that you're currently working on, um, that you want to talk about here. Just like literally give you the mic um, to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, on, on IG, my, um, on IG, I'm Eleganza. That's E-L-A-G-A-N-Z-A. -A -A. And there's um, a lot of like photos of me at Mobes. And um, I also have a plant account called Happy Halaman. It's happy dot halaman. And halaman means plant in Tagalog. Um, and that's what a little space that like I'm trying to explore. What does it mean for like plants, you know, from 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 our country? How you know, like since the plant world, the house plant world is becoming so big. It's like, what does this mean for um, like the economies back home when like we're bringing all this plant matter and not like recognizing where it comes from and like, you know, the economic conditions of people um, Anyways, and then uh yeah, I'm I'm around. I've I'll be with Gab Seattle forever. It's my like one true um home um where I was politicized. So yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All I've ever been for was I know I bet unshackled. We're watching Pagatha So let us speak As we breathe From evil 
name to the people. Hi, I'm Lori Pinor. Um, and we are just like coming off of the march um, for the event today. Um, so definitely feeling like energized yeah. a little. It's cold. So just give me like an idea of like where we're at right now. But I just wanted to um, sit here and like talk, you know, have conversation about like your personal experience with the event today, but overall just like organizing with Gabriella in general. So like starting off with the basic, what was the inspiration around the event today or like your inspiration for coming to the event, um, bringing your family, you know, mm -hmm. um, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, International Working Women's Day has been celebrated in the Philippines for a long time. And so we wanted to bring that here and we've been doing that here in the Seattle area since 2014. Um, and it's been a march, a gathering, various events. And this year, um, because uh, we do have a lot more members that are growing families, have children, we decided to have it here in Burien, uh, where a lot of our members are located. I'm, I'm hoping from Burien here. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I'm very excited to, you yeah, know, I see this event. I grew all around here. Like yeah. I said, uh, my mom lives in Renton, my dad lives in White Center. So, oh like, my God. This yeah, this is really right between us. So, yeah. yeah. Just, like really beautiful to see like this community in particular like my community you know um visible and like organizing within beer and so i want to say like salamat for that you know of course um but also i want to know like um uh, about your like personal history with gabrielle like talk about that like talk about yourself um i know like a lot of times like in organizing we talk about ourselves through organizing but i want to hear about you know, organizing through like you. I want to hear. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, talking about um, that. Well, or, when I um, I first joined Gabriella in 2012, so almost a decade now. And at that time, I was like starting a family, and and organizing was new for me too. So I was put into learning about how community organizing can really affect change while carrying a family. Um, and I think that really helped me because like everything, I, every day I have to show up, I have to think about my family. I have to think about how it's accessible um, and how we can include the next generation. And so our Seattle chapter here is really, we have a lot of moms. We have a lot of members from the LGBTQ community. We have a lot of members from uh, Puget Sound area, so not really located in Seattle. Um, and so we want to be able to meet the needs of those folks. and. Um, be a space to say that families can organize, can organize on really militant, really progressive, um, revolutionary issues that we um, we know that are like that is what we need to do. Um, and it and sometimes I think we go to the suburbs or something like to get away, and we don't want to like uh, shelter our children or anything. We want to really be. Um, here showing them how to organize within the community, how we can keep our community safe, and then also share with them um, the history of resistance in the Filipino um, community and bring that here. Creating like intergenerational like pride in that because like there's a lot of I feel like 
I don't know, like imperialist like attitudes like that kind of live within like our intergenerational relationships and it's 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 sad because like that those are the things that are and the systems and the mindsets that are also like harming our communities but there's like an acceptance or a tolerance um so like seeing like you in particular i guess you like you know with family like here like i don't know start to like break that down like it's just i oh, i i don't know like that's what i like personally like i'm striving for and like why i'm here and interviewing and talking about i'm like trying to learn from as well um so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I <I'm so laughs> need to um I just like my last question for you I guess is um also how are you like practicing that like how is the journey cuz I know like it's a constant one of like being able to um I guess like influence those around you whether they be like you know friends and family um to I guess take on that new idea of like a uh, progressive like Filipino like that agenda not not like the mm-hmm. specific bullet points or anything like uh-huh. that but just like yeah yeah I think something that really comes back to me um, is to really know your roots and know your history and maybe growing up a lot of us weren't really um, taught and weren't really like put in spaces where we can learn our history learn the history of Gabriela Silag learn the history of the Capiconeras, learn the history of the uh, Matibaka, who, and learn about revolutionary women who did fight uh, against colonialism, imperialism, feudalism, patriarchy. Um, and so I think that has been really great for our families. Like we really are learning about um, those that trailblazed the way and knowing our history. Um, and it's like, it's so eye-opening. Like even my kids are like, yeah, Gabriella, my mom's a Gabriella, right? And know that that means that we fight, you know, yeah. and that we have something that we're fighting for. Yeah. Like, my kids, they like know Maki Baka, they know all the chants, and they, I feel like, like when they say it, like, that's, like, they're just taking it, like, that's the culture we're teaching them, like a culture of resistance. Yeah, exactly. And making it like, I feel like there's this big stigma around it, um, mm-hmm. especially like, and not, I, I was talking earlier to um, EJ about this, like, it's, you have to understand that there is like experience that like feeds into it and that experience shouldn't be like undermined or discredited in any way like it's there for a reason um but like moving beyond that experience and showing that like just because as what like our parents or like our, our um like elders have like lived through doesn't mean that they should have lived through that mm-hmm. in the first place that they should have had to immigrate here to gain like a better future and more access to opportunities Mm -hmm. that like they should have been able to have opportunities and they did have opportunities beforehand like through learning um philippine like history not whitewashed american Mm -hmm. eurocentric imperialistic u.s or uh, filipino history yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah i'm totally 100 percent like on board with that on board with that yeah and uh thank you salama madam salama Salama. Happy yeah. International yeah. Working Women's Day 2021. Ooh. We'll be here again next year. I'll be Come out to our actions. Year. Come to our meetings. They're really family friendly. Um, and we know that um, our kids here, like, we want to really show them ways to fight for our future. Yeah. Yay! Thank you. Thank okay, you. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Don't you so okay. cute. Oh, yeah. oh, that makes you so I was happy. like, I know. What? What? Hey everyone watching, uh, I'm really excited to have these two beautiful people in my life, um, interviewing them or at least having a conversation with y'all like right now. Um, so without further ado, tell your names to the people. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Ann and I'm an there representing the Sisterhood of Pai Nui Iota. Hi everyone, my name is Claudia. I'm also part of the Sisterhood of Pine Oyota. Happy to be here today. Thank you. Very happy to have y'all here today. Um, so speaking of today in this event, um, I just want to know like why or at least like what brought you um, individually here, like together here um, to be in community with, you know, Gabriela Seattle um, and other like community organizers as well. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say that uh, we are so grateful and so honored to be sharing space with all the organizations that came today su- to support Gabriella's event and International Working Women's Day overall. Um, as the sisterhood of Pine Iota, we are a Filipino, Filipina, Filipinex interest sisterhood that encompasses uh, women within <laughs> women from 
uh, all three UW campuses, including Seattle, Tacoma, and Bothell, and Seattle University students. And our four pillars that we focus on that we advocate for in the Filipino and API community is through academic excellence, community service, cultural awareness, and women empowerment. And so what brought us here again, we support all women, uh, intersectional feminism, international solidarity. We are all here to support uh, all workers and women. Um, and I'd like to add to that too. I think a lot of it has to do with um, P and I and how our legacy started 15 years ago. However, we've had a little bit of, um, we or uh, in my three years um, within the Sister of Pino Yoda, I feel like we can do a lot better integrating with the masses, integrating with workers, working women, especially in migrant workers. And so I think connecting with Gabriela Seattle um, as a sisterhood, as a women empowerment centered organization is a really huge step to ensuring that we are doing the work that we can and we are representing that pillar. Um, and, uh, yeah, and you know, I think about my mom too, as a migrant worker, a working woman, a working class person and coming from a low income background. So it's really important for me to be here today um, and supporting this event. Um, yeah, really personal. We love to see it. I could say more, but we love to see it. Um, so on like that note as well, I can see the passion. Um, I also am like feeling it right now, you know, we just like marched um, through like 152nd. Um, so what's been like, you know, with that in mind, like what has been like the biggest like impactful takeaway, learning moment, moment in general that you are feeling, you know, passionate about right now, that you're excited to share, um, ready to share and learn from um, again right now. So yeah, take it away. <laughs> Mary's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can answer that. Um, well, I just feel empowered every time I'm in any organizing spaces. Um, I'm, I'm just always moved by, by people power, by community care, just collective power. When we're um, taking this time and energy to really march in the streets on the pavement for, you know, again, black and brown folks, all marginalized communities, workers. Um, we, as the Sister of Pai Nu Iota and other um, organizations like Gabriella, um, yeah, we're all here to support, like, again, all women, uh, immigrant, migrant workers, the working class. Um, because I think there's so much power in just collectiveness and community, um, just trying again to dismantle all the systems of oppression that really try to again harm Black and Brown folks and workers. You know, again, white supremacy, capitalism, imperialism. Um, we're here to dismantle. Um, we're here to destroy. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything else, to Claudia. Yeah, absolutely. So. You know, similar to what Marianne has been saying, just being here in community with one another, seeing the power that we have in just like, you know, a simple gathering together to honor those, um, you know, those that have been affected um, by like the pandemic, by issues across the globe that specifically uh, target women, that specifically tie them down or like harm women, right? And oppress them. And so I think to be here in this space, again, like with organizers, it's like so different and so special. Um, that community care aspect, like Mary had said, and, you know, just to, to share culturals with one another, to share music, uh, stories, to connect with um, intergenerationally. You know, we saw a lot of moms here, youth and students alike coming together and, um, yeah, sharing the space. And it's really, really empowering. Yeah. For me personally, like the family aspect today is something that I feel like is really absent from a lot of organizing spaces as much as like I love to see youth organizing and youth out like I would love to see like youth with family members like out more often so that was definitely like my big impact and like I wanted I want to replicate or like make spaces that like are family oriented so we can have those like important not just intersectional but intergenerational conversations too so right there with you um but my last question for y'all is like you know after today and i know that i've had conversations with both of you like individually about like what we can do now like now that we've learned now that we are consistently learning like what is the action oriented like part of it um but basically like what are you individually going to do to ensure that you're striving to advance the struggle of um women in the overall movement for national liberation um especially within our own like communities within our own identities of course like we want to again be intersectional but like how are we showing up for those folks around us specifically so yeah yeah thank you for the question <laughs> absolutely that's a really good question i think it's super important 
to really think about the tangible action steps that can be uh, taken um, after after coming together in community and and harnessing like harnessing that energy and agitation is super super important. Um, this is a it, these like mo like um, events and programming can serve as really pivotal uh, moments in certain organizational spaces. So I can think of PNI for example. Um, PNI as we we started having a political chair about three years ago. Um, and so it's still like, I would say like fairly new in the sense that there's not a lot of framework to it. And so like for me being political chair of PNI, um, it has been sort of a challenge, but also a really like a great challenge. Um, and so I think coming from the space um, and also being able to bring like my own sisters to this space for the first time, some of them like for the first time, um, which is really special to me, um, integrating that. Um, and so like to take this back to our organization and to to collectivize more people within PNI um, to get them more on board to host more events like this in collaboration with like for example Gabriel Seattle um, and to even go as far as affiliating with Gabriel USA which is something we're actually talking about right now because like that resource is there and um, that community is there like for us as women and we should be there for them too and so I think integrating that way um, like the work for myself and the future political chair can be a lot more intentional. There can be a lot more um, actual steps that we can take as far as like supporting, coming through, um, volunteering. Um, yeah, like on a regular, like on a regular basis, a consistent basis. Um, and one of one of the things I've talked about with Donna, who's a part of Gabriela Seattle, is actually working together to cultivate like a, a self-sustaining farm, which um, she's in talks with another um, Filipina individual and like like the King County area. And so I'm hoping to see the project come to fruition and see how I can support even after I graduate. But yeah, there's just so many ways. Um, and a huge part of it too is education and workshops and holding those discussions first and foremost. And so like as political chair, we'd be putting, um, having those workshops available to my sisters, sharing that information. Um, yeah, and just like telling them, like this is about you too. Like this is about your families, your parents. Um, this affects us all. It's about your, yeah, your loved ones, the loved ones of your friends, your family, so on and so forth. So I think that's like that's really important and in, in the framing of how we can go um, in terms of next steps. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have any? Sure. Yeah. So um, I got things to say. Yeah. Um, I would like to just add on to what my magnificent sister <laughs> at the Claudia was just saying. I I believe that knowledge and education in general is just power. Bringing that again awareness and consciousness to other people really spreading it like it will do power it'll do wonders also utilize your privilege as a person mm -hmm. know be conscious of yourself and what resources and things that you have access to and just bring those resources to other people um because again i think we're all here to in spirit of collective liberation um for all again black and brown folks marginalized communities um yes be conscious be aware um, spread the knowledge um, because like in the long run we just hope that all peoples will be liberated one day in a very we we hope that we can envision um, you know the sister of Pinoyota and like other organizations here to again collectively dismantle all the systems of oppression that really again affect um, the peoples that are all marginalized um, we hope to see a very anti-capitalist anti-imperialist um, society one day and it starts with with us with community um, it starts with again collective um, collaboration um, and just again having that power together um, but yeah that's that's all I could say yeah, yeah, yeah. okay um, and, and also to add to that something that Marianne said um, reminded me like yeah like I think coming to these spaces like myself as an individual in like the past it's been myself um or within like Anak Bayan since I'm also part of yeah. Anak Bayan um and to bring like PNI folks to this space um a, a huge goal is to is for me to gain those tools those those skills that knowledge and those practices and to directly integrate them yeah again to back back to my own organization share them with my sisters because it is difficult navigating those like political spaces mm -hmm. the political spheres and and that sort of thing. And um, I want to be able to bridge them to there um, in a way that's accessible um, in a way that's comfortable and safe, which uh, maybe they don't have like within their families. Like I, I can think of my own family, you know, it's not, you know, that's <laughs> no, safe as far as yeah. political. Yeah. Um, yeah, the spectrum and all. So, yeah, that like practice and tools and yeah, knowledge, knowledge is power. Education is power. Yeah. yeah. Bringing it back into our homes, making it personal for those like 
and making it personal for ourselves i think is really important like we can isolate ourselves with a lot of politics or like choose to do that but at the end of the day like we are impacted by the things that we should be fighting for ought to be fighting for and even if we aren't like there are ways that we can like align ourselves to make sure that those who are being most harmed by us and most marginalized are helped by ourselves and by our privileges as well so ditto to everything that y'all are saying thank you for talking with me Marang, salama like Yes. Oh, all, the, all the good all the good vibes all the vibes all the hearts thank you, thank you. <laughs> Maraming salamat to every individual organizer and organization that made today's safe and possible in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> That's all I got for now. This has been Davy and Ross with my folks at GZ Radio at the International Working Women's Day event and a day in my history that I will never forget. Happy International Working Women's Day! Oh my god. <laughs>